you need a solution for timesheet management? Maybe you currently have one, but it's too complex, too expensive, or too hard to use, and you need something more custom. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can create a custom time management application using Microsoft Power Apps. I built a template just for this that so you can easily install and download and customize to your needs. So let's see how it works. Let's start by taking a look at what this application does. Then I'll break apart some of its key features. We'll see what's going on behind the scenes and some things you can learn from the template. And then I'll show you how you can go install it. And the purpose of this timesheet template is to be a simple base scenario for you to do weekly timesheets. And it's something that you could take, install, and then customize to your needs. So in the app, you see we have a landing page and we have the ability to add new timesheets. So you can select a time for a given week with this dropdown that's automatically populated. So I can choose this week, for example, it automatically gets the context of the current logged in user to know that's who this timesheet's for. And then we can simply fill out our weekly timesheet. We have a column in here called bill to. So this can be anything you want. This could be billing to a specific project. It could even be just billing normal work hours versus overtime work hours. It's really customizable for this to be whatever you need it to be. So we'll just fill this out. So we'll say this is a project for client Y and I'll just fill out some hours of what I worked on this for the week. So you'll see we have for every day of the week here, we have the week number and then the day of the week that it is. And then it's automatically getting a total, which we can't edit. So it's doing that behind the scenes, getting your weekly total for that current project. And then of course we have a notes field so I can put in any relevant notes like worked on Power Apps project or whatever it is. Now the other thing you'll notice, this is a repeating table. So I have the ability to add multiple things in this weekly timesheet. So if I'm working on multiple projects in this scenario, I can just click the plus button. And now that adds a new row for me to fill out another row of timesheet information. So maybe I worked for client X as well for a few hours this week and I can fill in all that information. So I'll say worked on Power Automate project. And if there's any mess ups, there's a delete function that will remove a row and you can start over. And on the bottom right hand side here, you see we have the ability to save if we're not ready to submit this timesheet for approval yet. We just want to save a draft so we can come back to it later. So I'll just save this one so you see what that looks like. It goes and writes that to the data source. And then we get a confirmation that it's saved. And we can always return to home, submit a new timesheet, see our timesheets, whatever we need to do. Now I mentioned it submits it to the data source. For the sake of the template, I have the data going to a SharePoint list. This is just to make this template as accessible as possible to anyone, regardless of what licensing you have. But you can change the data source for the template after you install it to whatever you want it to be. So if you want it to be something more scalable than what a SharePoint list is, you can point that to Dataverse, Azure SQL, whatever you need, you can just change that and update some of the formula logic if your column names change. For the setup in the back end, we just have two main SharePoint lists in this case, the main one being the time entries list, which stores all the physical entries as a new row for every single row that you have in that repeating table. So we see all that data got carried over for those two rows that I have. And there's all of my information in the list. And then we have another list called bill to, which stores that dropdown information, which is customizable to be whatever you need. And this is associated in SharePoint as a lookup column in the time entries list to the bill to list. So we've saved a timesheet. Now we can go to the My Timesheets tab on our app, and then we can see all of the timesheets that I've submitted. So this is getting the context of the current logged in user and only showing you your timesheet. We have this nice tab control here so I can see all of my timesheets. I can filter by ones that are pending, submitted for approval, or that have been approved and rejected. So I can easily see all this information. So if I go to pending, there is that one that I just submitted but I didn't save. So if I were to click on that, I can make any additional changes if I had more work for the week, or if I'm ready to submit it, I just click on that submit, and now that will put that into my manager's queue. So what it's doing behind the scenes is automatically getting the current logged in user's manager when they submit a timesheet as well. So if we go back to that SharePoint list, you see that we have a manager column here, and right now I have myself set as my own manager for testing purposes, but it's going to be using the Office 365 Users Connector. And it's gonna look up to see based off of that data, what you have set as your manager, and that will go into their queue for approval. So from a manager's point of view, they could go to the approvals tab in the app and they'll see all of their team's approvals. Same thing, they can see by what's pending, what they've already approved or what they've rejected. So I can see here's for this employee and this is the week. So I can go into that, see all the details, now, one thing is these aren't editable in a manager view, so they can't override a time entry. 
And if everything looks good, I could click on the approve and a text box will pop open up next to that where I can put in my approval comments. So this is really helpful if I were to say, maybe reject that instead, and I can put in why it's rejecting, maybe you're requesting to make some changes and resubmit. So I'll choose reject here instead, and I'll say make a change to client X. Then if I click on this check mark, now it gives me confirmation that it's rejected. So I can go back home and into my approvals queue and I should see it, there it is, in my rejected pile. Now the template doesn't have any automation built into it. So if you wanna have notifications to the user if something is approved or rejected, that would be something you wanna add on with Power Automate. This is just the application itself to view and collect the data. And from the perspective of someone who has submitted the timesheet, I can go into my timesheets and I'll see that in the rejected pile. This is really meant to be a basic sample template that you can install to get what you need to do weekly timesheets that you can then customize. So now that you've seen what this app can do, let's talk about how you can install it. I'll of course put the link in the description, but if you go to aka.ms forward slash weekly timesheet template, that'll take you here to the GitHub repo where it's stored. You wanna make sure that you scroll down and look at the readme so it'll give you a screenshot of what the app looks like and some of the key features, but if you keep scrolling, it'll have the instructions on how to set up the backend list. So to get this working, you'll wanna set up those backend SharePoint lists that I mentioned. So I have all of the details listed out here of what the list names need to be and what the column names and column types need to be as well. And it's important to know to put the names exactly. Don't put any spaces if there aren't spaces in the name or make sure you do put a space if there's a space and make sure you look at any capitalization because it is case sensitive. So that could potentially cause issues with the app when you import if any of this information doesn't match. So the first step would be to actually get those lists set up according to the instructions that I have listed here so that you'll have a place to store the data. Now, the next thing that you'll do is download the solution. So if you go to the solution folder, You'll see a zip file here. This is a Power Platform solution that contains that Canvas app. So when you click on that solution, you should see in the upper right hand corner here a download button, and that will download that zip file to your hard drive. Your next step would be to go to make.powerapps.com and go to the environment that you want to install this on. You'll go over here to the solutions tab and you'll say import solution. Click browse and navigate to that solution that you just downloaded from the GitHub repo and import. And this could take a few minutes to run, so just sit back, relax. But within a few minutes, you'll have this solution available to you in your environment. Okay, it looks like it's imported, so we got the green success message. Now you can go into that solution, and there is our Canvas app. So now the next step is you need to make some changes to the app and update the data sources. So we'll click on these three dots and edit this app. And you'll get this screen pop up asking you to authenticate into the connectors. If you haven't used Power Apps before or haven't used the Office 365 users or the SharePoint connector, you might have to create a connection at this step. Otherwise, you can just bypass this and click allow. So from here, we need to go over to the data tab and we'll see our two connections to those two SharePoint lists. So you'll want to remove these because these are referencing the environment that I created them in. So I'll just click those three dots next to each one and say remove. And now we'll just go back in and add the SharePoint connector and point it to your SharePoint site where you created those lists. So go to add data from the screen and we'll search for SharePoint, click on the SharePoint connector, point to the site where you created those lists and just check each of those lists, the build to and the time entries, then click connect. And again, the data source doesn't have to be SharePoint. If you wanna use something more robust at this step, you would simply point to your data source where you've created those underlying lists. As long as you have the same column names in your data source, then there should be minimal changing that you need to do in the app. And that's really all you need to do to get this solution set up. You will obviously need to publish this and then share that out with your users. But at that point, you're done. Since we have this app open in the edit mode here, I figured I'll take the time to point out a few key things that are going on behind the scenes in the app because there's a few patterns that are used in this template that are good to use in other apps. First thing you'll notice is that in all of the screens, we're leveraging containers. So if we expand out any one of these screens, you'll see that everything is in a container so that theoretically I could optimize this application to be responsive and adjust accordingly to mobile or desktop. And the other big thing you'll notice with this template is the look and feel. Some of the controls might look a little different than what you're used to seeing, especially if you saw maybe my older version of a timesheet template, because recently modern controls have been starting to roll out in Power Apps. And these new modern controls give us a more modern, fluent UI look and feel for some of our commonly used controls in Power Apps. 
So in this particular app, we have the modern drop-down control, which looks great and will look good on your mobile device as well and kind of have the native drop-down effect. All the text inputs are modern controls and the buttons as well. So it really just helps to give a nice, consistent look and feel to the UI. And the cool thing about modern controls is they don't really require a lot of effort on our end to make them look good. They just are out of the box. Now, those are some of the visual things that you might notice right off the bat, but behind the scenes, a lot of things are happening when you first load the app. So we have a lot of power FX code logic going on to get the current week list, get the current logged in user and their timesheets and all that. So all of that traditionally would have been done on the app on start. However, I'm using another new feature in this template called named formulas. This avoids a lot of the issues that we've had with the app on start in the past with it bogging down your app and causing long load times. So if we go to the app tab here, you'll see there's a new property for formulas. This is where we can put our named formulas. So this is a really good example of how you could use these inside of your apps to be able to help with performance. So here I'm explicitly declaring certain variables that I'll use throughout my app that really won't change. Things like getting what the current Monday is for the week, which I need in my weekly timesheet screen. Getting the weeks list that's in that dropdown that we select, that's static information that's not going to change throughout the application. All of that makes sense to be put here as a named formula. And probably the biggest learning piece from this particular template is the concept of a repeating table. There's not a repeating table control inside of Power Apps, so you do this using the gallery. So you can take a look at what I did on the timesheet screen to reverse engineer it, but essentially you just put in a gallery. And when you do that, you're going to override all of the controls that are typically in a gallery and replace those with text inputs in the case for the timesheet and a dropdown. And within that gallery, you'll add some kind of button, like a plus button like I have here. And that's going to have the logic to be able to add a new row into this gallery. To be able to add new rows like that, we're leveraging a collection. So we have a collection that we've defined on the start of this screen called selected time entries. And this is where all the data is going to be stored. So all this plus button is doing is when we select it, we're doing a patch which writes data back to a data source. And in this case, we're writing it back to that collection and we're getting all the information from those individual controls. And we're just adding a row into that collection. So we save that information, but then you see right after that, we're just gonna simply add a new item into that collection that doesn't have any data. So now the user can replace all of that empty data with their valid data, and then that will get written back and a new row will get added when you click the plus button again. So I didn't wanna to get too much into the weeds of all of the ins and outs of the app because this is really meant for you to be able to install, reverse engineer what I've done, customize it to your needs, but did wanna to touch on some of the highlights and patterns that this shows, like modern controls, named formulas, repeating tables, responsive containers, and all of that. I'll put a link of where to download this in the video description, so check it out and please leave a comment in the video and let me know what you think about the template. I would love to hear if you find these templates helpful, if you want me to do more, if you have ideas for other ones, or if there's any issues with the template itself or features you'd like to see added. So if you enjoy these templates and videos I put out, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video.